welcome back 40k fans uh, it's battle forged brothers and we are filming a eighth edition battle report um we are playing <clears throat> on this arid planet um it's not antares 3 uh, it is very similar looking but we are playing the relic and as you can see by the smoldering wreck in the middle of an abandoned imperial bunker that's once been on this starting to overgrow planet this is the relic We'll discuss a little bit further on this, um, but we are playing Thousand Suns versus Craftworld Iandon. Um, so I will be taking control of the Thousand Suns today, and it's the first time that you're going to see Graham's Iandon Craftworld army on this. So as we scour over the battlefield, a little bit more about the Harlequin, of course. So we are playing a bit of a modification to the Relic rules. Now, a few other channels have done this before, and it's a mint idea, so why not? So, this here is the Harlequin. This is who the game will battle on. He is worth three victory points, and as you can see, he's been involved in some kind of crash, and his Skyweaver has exploded, and there's one surviving. He is disorientated, so he will be a moving relic, which we have decided he will move a random distance. Now, 8th edition... Scatter, scatter dice, all that kind of stuff's out of out of it, but we are going to bring the scatter dice back for the purpose of his movement to determine where he goes. So it'll be up to Craftworld Iandon to capture him, and it's up to the Thousand Sons, the Seekers of Knowledge, to capture him. Wanting some information on the Black Library, no doubt, from Araman. So distance-wise, what we're going to do is we are going to minimize minimize his distance. Um, to we are going to d uh, d6 it. So it could be between 1 to 6. Now any, any unit that comes close to him within 6 inches, friend or foe, we will rule to see if he does attack him. Now in regards to attack, we're not going to allow him to assault, but we are going to allow him to shoot. So he's going to freak out, he is disorientated, and potentially shoot his allies. Now of course Iandon will want to rescue him. But... Graham's force, which we'll go over in a couple of moments, does have some slightly faster units. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the maximum distance that you can move with the relic as nine inches. The minimum is going to be four. It could be imagined that he's struggling, um, hallucinating, whatever it may be. He's not willingly wanting to go, whether it is the Thousand Suns or whether it's Craftworld and him. So we will come back after the army lists. We have rolled for deployment and a bit of a change. We, are, we have rolled randomly for Dawn of War, and it always seems as though we do Dawn of War, uh, but I will be actually deploying on this side for a change. So we'll come back after deployment for the Thousand Suns, who have won the roll-off for deployment and going first. So we'll be back in a moment. Right, okay, so we have deployed and we have set up, and as you've seen, I did win the roll-off, so I have deployed first, so I'll quickly go over my list. So we have Magnus anchoring the right hand side, uh, he's just behind this big mound here uh, with an overlook of the view. Um, powers obviously Smite and all the other heretic uh, Astartes ones. Um, moving across, right way over here is my Warlord, um, which is an Exalted Sorcerer. Um, he has uh, Smite, uh, Prescience and Warp Time. Moving over we have the Rubric Squad here, um, just making... Bit, a bit of the bulk of the force, to be honest, with a bit of a, a bit of a view towards this ruined outpost here, and obviously smite for him. Uh, we have three, <coughs> excuse me, three exalted sorcerers which form the supreme command detachment. And we have one on foot, and obviously the one that looks as though he's flying, and then obviously one on disc as well. So these all know the same powers. Um, I've chose obviously everyone knows smite, so they know infernal gears and prescience. And just on the board, they're not actually on the board yet, but this is just my reserves. You have the Heldrake with the Bale Flamer and the Heldrake Claws. And then just behind them is the Scarab Recall Terminators, which will be teleporting in. And obviously Smite and a Soul Reaper Cannon. There is a Soul Reaper Cannon in the Rubik Squad, as you can expect. And opposing them is Craftworld Iandon, who will be making a beeline. And a very appropriate chair in the background as well, for the colour-wise. Um... So, moving across, we have the Wraith Lord, who is in reserve, and he is armed with a Scatter Laser, a Star Cannon, two Flamers, and the Ghost Glaive. Um, we have 
a squad of scat bikes there, another squad there. We have some Wraith card over here with the uh, the Wraith cannons. We have two D cannon platforms. The Warlord, is he your Warlord? He Kroon? is. Yep. He is my Warlord. Yeah. That is the Farseer. And Powers that he knows is Smite, uh, what was it? Fortune and Doom? Gu uh, Guiding, Guiding Doom. Sorry. Guiding Doom. Guiding Doom. Uh, he's accompanied by some Wraith Guard as well with the Scythes. Moving just past the Ruined Manifactorium, we have another squad of scatter bikes. The Avatar, nice to see him on the board. And obviously the Wraith Knight as well with a commanding view looking right across. And I can just imagine these two facing off against each other. Um, behind cover at the moment, but we'll have to see what's going to be uh, happening with the, the wall to see who will be going first. So each force, the way that we've put them in the detachments, um, obviously I have three detachments. I have the Supreme, sorry, Super Heavy Auxiliary, which is him. And then obviously the Supreme Command one over here. And of course, me patrol detachment. So I get one command point. Uh, Graham's force is split up into the Outrider detachment and also the Super Heavy Auxiliary. Um, so he gets one command point, which we would be able to use a stratagem at any point in the game. But of course it all hinges on this guy around here, the Harlequin, just lurking around there. He is the objective. We do have um, Line Breaker, Slay the Warlord, and First Blood, of course. So I am currently going first, unless, of course, the Craft World Iandon would like to seize. So on a roll of a six. <sighs> very, very close. Um, right, so we will move on with the first turn for the Thousand Sons. So we are back at the beginning of Thousand Suns uh, movement, well, the end of it. Um, so with it being 8th edition, obviously, naturally, we are probably going to get a few things wrong. We'll try not to, but of course. Um, so the Disc of Zinch Sorcerer has moved up 12, uh, looking to get some shots at that um, with the Psyche Phase, hopefully. Uh, the other one's just coming up uh, 6, and he's moved up 6 as well. Uh, the Rubrics have advanced 5, and the, obviously the Sorcerer has just jumped up. Uh, six, he's the Aspiring Sorcerer. Uh, the Warlord has just moved up six across here. Um, looking to start to make a, a beeline into the compound alongside the rubrics. Magnus has come out to play. Um, he's just zipped along 18 inches and looking to maybe get some psychic uh, shenanigans off. We'll see what we can do in the psychic phase, um, which we haven't we haven't advanced. Um, but we're going to do psychic and shoot and we'll fill them at all as one and we'll come back at the end of shooting phase. Right, so we are back at the end of, um, actually the end of the phase. Um, eighth edition is running rather smoothly. So, Psychic phase, uh, this Exalted Sorcerer um, cast Infernal Gears as well as Smite and got us first blood by taking out the Wind Riders there. Um, this one here didn't, didn't have any range on anything, so he didn't do anything. And also, just a note on this, the Farseer wasn't in range to deny, so there was no deny. Uh, this guy here cast Prescience on the Rubrics. Um, Magnus, unfortunately, was out of range, same as the Warlord, but uh, we have moved further forward. 
um, we'll have to hope we can weather the storm from the Wraith Knight there. Uh, just in shooting, not really anything great to go to sing home about. So now in 8th edition, as far as we understand it, obviously each unit um, you can randomly select, you know, like a special weapon, for example, to fire something else. So um, we may be wrong on this, but this guy, closest unit for his, bolt, for his uh, Inferno bolt gun was the Wind Riders. So he's took a shot at them and the Soul Reaper Cannon and another three bolters were in range of the Wraith Guard. Everybody else was out range. So we have shot him into there, killed one. And obviously the other guys into the Wraith Guard and took one of their number out. Um, in the morale phase, because uh, there's no, no assault of course, uh, we're, we're not in range. Um, they passed all their morale of course. So we are at the end of Thousand Suns turn one. Uh, quite a quick turn as well. Um, that two is there just to remind because I've got prescience so we're hitting on twos. And that is it. So current scores 1-0. But we are going over to Craftwell Diandon's first turn. So they will be looking to make a beeline for the hard one. Um, we do need to do his movement as well. So we may as well do that on camera. Um, so we are going to d6 it and scatter. And we will see where he goes. Okay, so he is going two inches towards this rock. So we'll place him and, and then we'll also we'll continue on with the beginning of Iandon Craftworld turn one. Right, we are just at the beginning of uh, Croft World and uh, first turn. Um, there's just an addendum, obviously, with learning the rules. These things are, are bound to happen. Um, so, uh, what we've done is we forgot, obviously, that the wounds, things like that have changed. So, uh, they are back to full strength, but obviously they have lost a wound. And the same goes for the Wraith Guard. The Wraith Guard unit is uh, Graham's elected to put uh, a wound on the back guy there. Um, we've calculated the wounds uh, count for these, and these would still be dead. Um, so, we are still on 1-0. Um, but we will come back after the movement phase for Iandon. Right, we are just back at the end of Iandon Craftworld's movement phase. So these bikes have just zipped along. And I'm going to probably pump some shots into the Exalted Sorcerers. The Wraith Guard, they've just shifted up there. Guys have just pivoted around um, as well as the Wraith Guard. They've just uh, shifted along a little bit. Um, however, these guys have flew straight over. And they are now claiming the Harlequin. So they will be able to move nine inches rather than the standard, um, just to simulate the fact of them carrying an extra passenger who is not really willing to go. Um, but for now, they have claimed the relic. So it'll be up to the Thousand Sons to beat them off it. So the Avatar, as well as the Big Daddy Wraith Knight, have come storming ahead, and it looks as awesome shots are more than likely going to come in at Magnus. So we'll come back after the Psyche phase, because um, Graham does have a Psyche. Um, see if he's, if he's going to do things like prescience, um, uh, guide, sorry, and we'll come back after the shooting phase. Right, so we are back after the Eldar Craft World movement and shooting, psychic, we've done all that kind of shenanigans. Um, brutal shooting turn. So, um, these guys have shot into this exalted torso and reduced him down to one wound. Um, absolutely brutal. Um, so... Over here, however, as you can see, the rubrics are no more. That came from horrendous fire coming from the D-cannons. They shot over. D6 damage, just couldn't hold back. Uh, even with the invuns, just wasn't enough. Wiped out the entire squad. So very, very good work from the craft world there. Um, across here, another good one as well, of course. The Wraith Knight firing the sun cannon. Shooting in, reducing Magnus down to 13 wounds from his 18. So he's been hit quite hard as well. Um, so we do have a low model count for Thousand Suns anyway, but there's not a great deal on the board. We do have some reserves, uh, which we very, very much need. I've heard lots of good things about it, that it is very brutal, and I am feeling it. Um, the more important thing, though, however, the Harlequin, he is with his Craftworld brethren, uh, they will be looking to take him away as soon as possible, but not until the Thousand Sons get their revenge. So we will be looking to get Magnus. Will we see Magnus facing off against the Wraith Knight and the Avatar? Or will he scoot over here? We'll have to wait and see. So we'll come back. Uh, the scores are still um, obviously 1-0 uh, uh, at the moment, but definitely in the favour of the Elder at the moment. So we'll certainly come. We'll come back after Thousand Suns turn at two.
Right, we are just back after the thousand tons moving phase. <clears throat> and as we can see, exotic sorcerer has just moved up here. The one on the disc has just gone a little bit forward, um, just in case that uh, Graham's bikes don't move to get the better ballistic for him. At least he's going to take more of the wounds rather than him, and he has slowly fallen behind as well. Plus, we may be able to get some nasty psychic powers off. Um, the warlord has just jumped up here just to see if he can get some psychic powers off and potentially see if he can snatch the relic. Magnus has flew over here, 16, and dropped down there. Um, we were temp I was tempted to go for the Wraith Knight, but with the Avatar being close by as well, with the wounds that he's already lost, it could be potential that he would die pretty quickly. Um, at the end of the movement phase, which is what we do for uh, reserves now, Heldrakes came on 30, uh, looking to get some Bale Flamer shots. Um, I know obviously the Terminators, deep striking down there, 9 inches away, no scatter, um, which is brilliant. Um, that feels awesome. So we will come back after psychic and shooting and Hopefully we can dish out quite a lot of damage All right, so we are back after the thousand suns turn two um, We uh, shooting and psychic So over here as you can see the bikes are gone. That was a combination of smite and infernal gears from these two here um, This guy wasn't in range of anything uh, This guy however did amazingly well um, alongside Magnus, of course, as well, and reduce this squad down to one. Um, and over here, the Terminator, he got quite a good result on Smite as well and reduced this squad down. Um, he dealt three wounds in total, three mortal wounds, uh, with a combination of fire as well coming from the Soul Reaper cannon as well as the Bolters. Um, they're quite whittled down. They're still quite tough, um, but we are whittling them down. Bale Flamer didn't do any damage, unfortunately. Um, but apart from that, not anything really to sing home about, but we do have an assault to set off. I am going to charge the Warlord to see if we can finish off this unit here. And if we do, then we can claim the Relic. So, we are going to roll on camera. Um, it's a very short distance, so as long as we can get it, we'll be happy. Okay, so on a roll of 11, we'll definitely be in. So we'll cover... Uh, Overwatch and we'll figure out in regards to the assault uh, fears, we'll resolve that and the morale fears of course and then we'll all be done so we'll be back at the end of Thousand Suns turn 2 right so we are back at the end of Thousand Suns turn 2 very very quick um, we don't have any morale to do um, so very quickly as you can expect um, very quite an easy assault phase actually um, we got 3 hits and dealt well we didn't really need a roll to be honest with the D3 damage from the 4 stave so that wiped out the bike and we're currently holding the relic as well but we have a big beastie over here it's more than likely going to jump over and fire and kill him but at least with us being here potentially Magnus may be able to kidnap him so we'll have to have a look and see what the Eldar plan on doing um, I think the next uh, assault phase we will cover on camera but we'll be back after the Eldar turn two Right, so the Eldar have advanced in their second turn, and as you can see, at the end of it, the Wraith Lord has arrived. So, Wraith cards have just pushed forward, more than likely looking to take some shots at the Heldrake. Um, Farseer just accompanying, more than likely, in the sight phase, just to boost them up with some powers. And these guys have just shifted around to, to take some firepower onto the Terminators, and of course the Avatar is more than likely going to be assaulting. And we'll have to wait and see what happens, whether there's five... But the big news, yes, as predicted, Wraith Knight, the towering Wraithborn construct, is looming down. I have very high hopes that that rock is going to protect my sorcerer. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a magic rock, so, so I think he's more than likely going to be obliterated. If not, then we will still hold the Harlequin. But for the time being, we're going to go into the Psychic Phase. And we're going to also do the shooting phase. Psychic phase is very, very quick now, so we might as well do both of them at the same time. So we'll come back after the resolution of psychic and shooting. Right, so we are back after the Eldar um, turn, uh, the, the second turn for the Eldar. Um, very brutal. Psychic phase, um, only really guide, but Grim didn't really need it. Uh, shooting phase, however, Heldrake took a lot of firepower from these Wraith Cannons. Wraith Cannons, I'm probably going to see a lot of people using these with the D6 damage, it was horrendous. Reduce it down to 
to one wound. Then the Farsi, the war, uh, uh, not the warlord, sorry, the um, yes, he is the warlord. My apologies. He managed to take him down. Rolled a six for damage as well. Uh, did not get crash and burn, but the hell Drake's out of it. He's done absolutely nothing this turn as well. So unfortunate, but we have to press on. Uh, a lot of firepower coming in from the D cannons at Magnus as well, but his in run holding through. He only took one. Uh, he took two wounds. Sorry, so he is down to ten. Um, and over here, uh, nothing really to sing home about. The avatar did attempt to uh, shoot his will and doom and rolled one uh, to hit. Um, no doubt we'll see a charge there as well. However, um, so speaking of charges, um, Grim no doubt will have some charges to set off. So we'll just roll them on camera. So. I uh, presume the Wraith Knight is going to... Uh, actually, he's got nothing to charge into. Because um, he killed him. Um, so I presume that the Avatar is going to make a charge into the Terminators over there. Okay, yeah. so right, he needs about, like, about three inches will do. Okay, and... Yeah, he's in. Even without the second, uh, the second one, that's absolutely fine. So we will resolve Overwatch for that. Um, no further charges. Nope. No. Um, right, so we'll come back after the assault phase, after the result. Uh, we'll probably film this on camera as well, so we'll be back after Overwatch is resolved. Right, so we are at um, the assault phase here. Uh, the Avatar has made it in. Uh, we didn't do any damage on Overwatch. Um, so no doubt these guys are going to be absolute mincemeat. So... Uh, the avatar uh, gets, uh, I believe it is fire attacks. Yeah. So hitting on twos with his amazing weapon skill. Okay, so just the one miss. Um, and wounded on twos as well. Right, okay, so two wounds. Uh, obviously, it is d6 damage, however. Now, with the wheel and doom, um, you do roll two dice and you discard the lowest. So for the first wound. You need to save, you you save these two wounds. This is one yes, yes, two. correct. Yes, so um, absolutely correct. So five up in one for the first one. Mm -hmm. No. And the second one? No. So both go through, and now we're rolling for damage here. So the first wound. Okay, so you're going to pick five. And the second one? Nine. Okay, so that is nine wounds dished out. So it looks as though that we're going to have one Terminator on one wound here. Um, so, yeah. So we will get our attacks back. So we'll come back after the resolution. But no doubt this unit will be dead after the morale fear, after the morale phase. So we'll come back at the end of the Eldar turn two. Right, okay. So we are back after the uh, conclusion for the assault phase. Um, we are. Uh, we did actually manage to survive, of course. Uh, we, did, we did a wound to the Avatar, uh, but he did ignore it, uh, past his save. Um, we passed our morale as well, so we're absolutely fine over there. But we obviously the Avatar can fall back, or I can fall back in my turn as well. Um, so it's looking very, very, very grim at the moment. Um, but we are going to see if we can pull something out of the bag here. We, we're not going to give up. Uh, we are going to see if we can uh, win the game at the end of the day. So... We are going into Thousand Suns turn three, and we will be back in a moment. Right, so we are back after the Thousand Suns turn three. Um, not a great deal, to be honest. Sightly Phase was probably the best, um, as you can expect. Um, we whittled these guys down to one. Um, we do need to do a morale for him as well at the end, um, which we'll cover in a second. Um, just really kind of moving to try and get a couple of smites off. Um, we did do some powers against the Wraith Knight as well. And we did take off two mortal wounds. Um, we did try to charge. It was very risky. We're currently holding the objective with Magnus. Because the Harlequin scattered five inches this way. And he's just decided to shift over a tiny little bit and claim him. So that's the way that we're playing it. So he's currently holding them. However, we're probably going to see a lot of firepower and potentially a big combat here. Um, combat over here is um, the, did no damage, um, and apart from that, we are almost well. We're, we're very much on the bat leg here. It is still level pegging. If the game does end, um, although we are going to turn three, however, so really 
Graham does need to kind of get uh, to get this, which I think he probably will. So we'll be back um, after the movement phase of the Iandon Craftworld Turn 3. Right, so we are just um, towards the end of Craftworld Iandon Turn 3. Uh, we've done movement, psychic, and also we've done morale uh, as well, and also the um, shooting phase. So just shifted around with the Warlord. Uh, the Wraith Lord's moving ahead. These are all just pivoted around. Wraith Lord has jumped as close as he can to Magnus. Um, in the Psychic phase, um, very poor. I didn't get any powers off. Um, however, Shooting phase, uh, we have lost the Exalted here. And Magnus is, is down to six wounds. Uh, that came. He did soak up a lot of firepower. And he did pass a lot of, uh, a lot of saves as well. He had uh, 13 saves to, say, uh, to, to make. Um, so not too bad. Um, we do have a combat to resolve over here. Um, and a charge. So more than likely the Wraith Knight charging into Magnus. Um, and are you wanting to charge this uh, the Wraith Lord as well? Yeah. Okay, right. So, okay, so we'll roll for the uh, the Wraith Lord first, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's going to be in. We'll uh, resolve Overwatch in a second. And the Wraith Knight... Yes, the Wraith Knight's yeah. going to be in as well. Okay, so we do have some combats to resolve. So we'll come back at the end of the phase. We may have to call it depending on what happens. Um, so this could be um, first victory for Graham, making an, uh, for his Eldar as well. So we'll see what happens, though, depending on what the damage is. Back in a moment. Right, we are just at the end of uh, Craftworld Iand in turn three. Um, and as you can see, there was literally Magnus and this guy left. The Wraith Lord ripped uh, the Exalted Sorcerer apart. And of course, as expected, uh, the Terminator is no longer there. Uh, the Avatar has just obliterated him. Um, Damage-wise over here, Magnus down to three wounds. Um, we did knock six wounds back, um, but we are we are feeling it. Um, we are going to go continue on to Thousand Suns turn four. Uh, this more than likely will be the final turn. Can we hold on to the Harlequin? If we hold on to the Harlequin, we we will win. If not, then more than likely the Eldar will win. So we'll have to see what happens. So we'll be back in a moment. Right, okay, so we are at the end of Thousand Suns turn four. Um, and as you can see, there is literally hardly anything on. So what we've done is the Exalted Sorcerer has been very cheeky and advanced. And he's currently holding the Harlequin. In the Psychic Phase, dealt quite a bit of damage here and also on the Wraith Knight, but as you can see, Wraith Knight is gone. Magnus, unfortunately, uh, he did take him out and Graham did roll on the Catastrophic Damage and he did get a 6. And on the on the D6 result for the wound, Mortal Wounds, he rolled a 3 and Magnus has been taken. So, um, we will continue on um, to see what's going to happen here. Graham basically needs to kill this guy here. If he does, he wins. If he doesn't, there's a potential that the Thousand Sons, after all this, could still potentially win. So we will come back after the move. Well, we'll just do the whole phase with it being quite uh, with only one model. So we will come back very shortly. Right. So we are at the end of uh, Craftworld Iand in turn four, and also the end of the game. Uh, so very quickly, just shifted forward. Everybody, as you can appreciate, went straight for the Exalted Sorcerer, who is still alive. In combat, did really well. Took him down to one wound, um, but the Exalted Sorcerer over here, I needed one wound. If I killed him, I'd have won the game. But it has ended, uh, we have rolled, and it is a contested objective. Um, according to the way that it's wrought on the, the relic, um, I mean, obviously it may be different, there may be something that we haven't seen, but according to what we've seen on the mission, um, then it is a draw. Because Graham got Slay the Warlord, however I got First Blood. Nobody's got Linebreaker, and the objective is contested. So, it looks as though it's a bit of a tug and war game here, but to be, to be honest, I think that Graham probably would have done a wipeout, to be honest. Uh, so, 8th edition, it feels very, very brutal. Um, I don't know what Graham's uh, said multiple times throughout the game as well, that it feels very brutal. Uh, let's say it, it feels a little bit like as though we are forgetting something, but as far as what we can read, um, we've played it quite correctly. Uh, what was your thoughts on 8th 
Graham. Like, like I say, throughout the game, brutal. Um, quicker. Lots of damage, lots of wounds, quicker. It is quicker, isn't game it? Game does flow very well. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we will keep rereading, rereading codex, uh, the indexes and so forth, just in case. No one will, will end up finding out that we've done something wrong. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this game. Uh, the, the Thousand Suns have felt it um, very, very badly. Um, we are have got some reinforcements coming along. Uh, it'll be a while, however, because I'm working on the Harlequins. Uh, but you will see some changes in this. We have to adapt. But at the end of that game, uh, it is a draw. Um, hope you've enjoyed this 8th edition battle report. And stay tuned next time. Thanks.